Lorsqu'on pense aux grandes salles de spectacle du monde, le Broadway Theater ou encore le Bacon Theater de New York nous viennent immédiatement en tête. Il y a aussi l'Olympia de France ou le Théâtre du Globe de Londres, où William Shakespeare y a présenté plusieurs œuvres. Un questionnement s'impose alors. Le Canada abrite-t-il une salle digne de se classer parmi les grands théâtres de la planète? Eh bien oui. Peu de gens connaissent l'existence de l'Elgin and Winter Garden Theater à Toronto. Cet héritage historique torontois a longtemps présenté des films du Festival international du film de Toronto et même, à ses débuts, des films muets. À son tout début, le cinéma muet occupait une place importante dans la culture de l'Amérique du Nord. L'Elgin and Winter Garden Theater de Toronto était une place de choix pour présenter ce nouvel art. Cependant, les chercheurs ne s'entendent pas encore sur le premier réalisateur qui dominait, vers la fin du 19e siècle, dans l'Est du Canada. There's lots of debate about when it started and how it got here. Uh, for a long time, it was thought that the first films in Canada were shown here in Toronto, but it turns out they're actually shown in Montreal. Um, because the, the French companies like Lumière, etc., were showing stuff in Montreal and Edison was showing stuff in Toronto, there was debate around when it started. The earliest films that were shown here were produced by the Edison Corporation, by American Mutoscope, by Biograph, These are all small companies that were based mostly in New York City, though some were in Chicago, that produced films that were two to five minutes tops of length. Most of them were actualités, um, or small uh, pantomimes, and uh, they were either documentaries from everything from Niagara Falls on through to elephants in India, or they were small comedic scenes. Silent movies had started about 1896 okay. in Toronto and it was about a block south of where the Elgin Winter Garden Theatre is today and it was an old theatre called Robinson's Musée Theatre and they had something called a Vitascope silent movie projector and that was really exciting really dynamic for people people had still photographs uh, but to see a silent movie uh, was a really really exciting thing and the first silent movie one of the first silent movies to be shown in Toronto was a picture of a, a steam train coming down a track towards the camera, oh. and everybody got really oh, excited yeah, yeah. to see this coming towards them. Uh, and then they got more and more elaborate, they got a little bit longer. By maybe 1915, they were starting to make uh, more feature-length silent movies, an hour, 90 minutes, an hour and a half. Uh, before then, they were just very short. And people didn't think, movie producers didn't think people had the attention to sit through a movie for a whole hour. They thought it would be too boring for them. Uh, but that's about the time that they started making silent movies here. When uh, silent movies were starting to get longer, uh, and, uh, you know, again, maybe over an hour or something like that. Uh, interesting little thing about uh, Charlie Chaplin, he, of course, uh, started United Artists Studios with uh, Douglas Fairbanks, mm -hmm. who was the action star, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and his wife, um, Fairbanks' wife, was uh, Mary Pickford, who uh, was the first real superstar, film superstar, and she started out in silent movies, and she was born right here in Toronto. Uh, well, when the Low Theatre started out uh, in 1913-1914, they were showing uh, a lot of live performances, uh, singing, dancing, comedians, animal acts, also interspersed with uh, silent movies, and the silent movies that they showed back in those days were very short, just a couple of minutes long, uh, and that had started out maybe 20 years before. Uh, and that changed in the mid-1920s. They started showing talking movies. Marcus Lowe, who owned this theater, got into film distribution, and he worked with a company called Metro-Golden-Mayer, MGM Studios, okay. and they started showing uh, big, epic movies in the 1930s. The Wizard of Oz, Gone with the Wind, Northwest Passage. Mm -hmm. Those were all really big movies in the late 1930s up until about 1940. And then later, uh, after that, the quality of the movies started to get progressively kind of worse up until about 1980. And uh, they showed a lot of kung fu movies, uh, action movies. And it was opened to show films, but also for uh, vaudeville. So there'd be a mixture of films and uh, comedians performing on stage, people singing. In 1928, they closed down the Winter Garden. Uh, they had some problems with the scheduling and they didn't want to uh, invest the money for the sound equipment uh, for the new movies upstairs. Bien que l'Elgin and Winter Garden Theater a subi de dures épreuves comme ses quelques fermetures et son déclin suite à l'apparition du cinéma parlant, il a tout de même su survivre. 
Aujourd'hui géré par le Fiducie du patrimoine ontarien et accueillant depuis quelques années le Festival international du film de Toronto, ce bâtiment semble plus solide que jamais. La culture cinématographique de Toronto a ainsi pu se développer pleinement. D'Addison à Tim Burton, Toronto a pu traverser le temps sans problème. Et si une visite du théâtre où tout a commencé vous intéresse, le coût régulier est de 10 ou de 8 si vous êtes un étudiant. 